neglect. Listen, I will not be, I will not be neglect to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them and be established in present truth. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle, so stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Fathers, we do bow before your throne of grace, Lord, in Jesus' name, as humbly as you know how, Lord. We do thank you for the saving grace, Lord. We do thank you, Lord, for what we've already felt here, the presence of a living God, a walking in the midst of your people, Father. We do thank you for that. And Lord, you see, God, that we have a need here. Lord, you see, God, we, we are nothing without you, Lord. I pray, Lord, in your presence, Lord, as we humbly bow, Lord, we do ask, God, you just fill us with your power, your presence. And Lord, that you would be able to uh, expel what you've had in us all day long, Lord, as we've been studying and, and uh, contemplating this. Lord, I pray, God, that you'll just help us, Lord, and lead us and guide us and direct us in every thought. God, I pray you'll help the recipients, Lord, to receive it as you would have them to. Lord, I pray we'd be like Zacchaeus most of the time, Lord, when the Word of God's preached, we would just receive it joyfully. Our Lord, to be able to come to it, Lord, I pray. Help me to be that way, God, I pray. God bless these dear people, though, Father, I pray in Jesus' name. And the church say it. Amen. Now we're going to go up to verse number, I think it is verse number 4. I want you to see that Peter was not talking to the lost. He was not talking to anybody other than the church that he was a minister to. And I want you to see, I, I know that sometimes I, I feel like I'm trying not to get above anybody's pay grade, but really I'm talking to the leaders tonight. Now listen, friend, we as Christians, we as fathers, we as mothers, we as pastors, we as Sunday school teachers have a responsibility to those that are under us. Amen. We are accountable for each one. Hey, friend, I tell you right now, if we seen it as such as God did, hey, friend, we would see it as important to pray, it's important to read, it's important to study, it's important to be led. Amen. Hey friend, if you're not teachable, then how are you going to teach? Hey friend, if you're not able to receive, how are you going to preach? Hey friend, how are you going to be able to do such a thing if you don't and ain't obedient to the will and the presence and the Spirit of God? Hey, guess what? He wrote down the whole book. Hey man, one... Hey, Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, he wrote it all down. Yeah. Hey, it wasn't just men of God that were of renown, hey, but were moved by the Holy Ghost to write the Holy Scriptures. Paul, it says, hey, friend, it is made for reproof, for correction, for doctrine, hey, friend, for instruction in righteousness. Hey, friend, we do not need the Word of God. Whereby, in verse number 4 of chapter number 1 of Second Peter, it says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be uh, partakers. You hear that? That ye might be partakers. It's up to you. Hey, he, he said, he, David said in uh, Psalms 23, I believe it is in verse number 5 or 6, he said, the Lord prepares the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Hey, you can be a partaker or not. Hey, he, can, he ain't going to shove a silver spoon in your mouth. He ain't going to baby feed you. Hey, friend, he'll put it out there for you to get, but you have to want it to get it. Amen. If you don't want it, you ain't going to get it. If you want it, you're going to get it. Hey, friend, you might have to bite your neighbor's fingers off as they put you or their finger in your plate. Hey, but when you're willing and you're desiring it, hey, guess what? You're going to get it. Now, I am spoiled a little bit. And listen, I do. Hey, listen, I don't glutton in bad things. Hey, but listen, if you don't want your portion, I might get it. Amen. Hey, bite my finger off if you want it. I won't try. You don't want it, I want it. Listen, friend, we got to partake of this thing. Might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And listen, I've got a lot to do in this tonight. I, the Lord's giving you a lot of thoughts and I want to bring them all to you, but if I don't, God knows what He need, what you need. I will listen in verse 5, and besides this, giving all diligence. Hey, friend, we need some diligence. Hey, what is that? That's a, a steady, careful work. 
Hey, friend, that's not one that just goes out there and obliviates everything, tries to put a nail in a board and says that's okay, that's the way it's supposed to be. No, friend, we're supposed to study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Hey, careful and steady. You study it before you do it. My dad used to be a builder, a house builder, a log home builder, and he had blueprints to go by. And listen, when he had them blueprints, if he went out of order, he could go back to those blueprints to help him out, to correct the mistake. Hey, friend, you have a blueprint. Hey, friend, it's uh, 66 books of them. You want to know what you need to do? Get out of the preacher's way. Get out of the Sunday school teacher's way. Get in your own prayer closet. Get the Bible open and start reading it. Preachers always ask this, how's your Bible reading? Amen. How's your Bible reading? How are you going to know the mind of God if you ain't in the mind of God? Amen. Amen. How are you going to know to react to things if you don't ask God what He done to do it? You can't do it on your own. You must be diligent. And diligence shows us it's a pace. Hey friend, it's not just a sprint, it's a marathon. Hey, there's a starting line, but there's also a finishing point. And we must be steady in that. We must be careful in that. We must be entreated, of course. We must have hospitality, of course. We must have grace, of course. We must have love, of course. I'm getting ready to go into all those things. Hey, but friend, if we're not careful, we're not diligent about the work God's given us, hey, there's one out there to destroy it. The thief is but to come to steal and to kill and destroy. Robert, he hates you. He hates you with an iron fist. You want me to tell you what he'd like to do? He'd love to take that family and bust it all to pieces. You want me to tell you what he'd love to do? My family? He hates me and I don't know. I hate him too. Amen. Hey, it's on fair ground. Amen. Hey, but listen, friend, tonight, uh, he hates me for the cause of Christ and anything he would love to do more is to bust my family up, bust my church up, destroy my ministry. Hey, the why, my friend? So the reproach cannot just be on me, but it'll be on Christ. We got to be diligent about this stuff. Careful, steady work. Realize it's real, and there's an enemy. Hey friend, to be careful is to understand your surroundings, your awareness. Hey friend, I want you to know Peter got a little bit over unaware or aware of his surroundings when he looked at the wind and the waves. I'll agree. He didn't focus on Jesus enough in his storm. Hey, but friend, when you're not in a storm, hey, if you're going into one, hey, guess what? Look to Jesus. If you're in the middle of one, look to Jesus. If you're going out of one, look to Jesus. Hey, why? Because He is the good shepherd. He's the one that cares for you. He's the one that can teach you how to be careful, how to be aware, and how to know where the foxes are, how to know where the are spoiling you are how to know where the enemy is he knows it more than we do be diligent have diligence give all diligence add to your faith virtue a virtue you know what it is a virtuous woman is her price is above rubies and virtue in the biblical meaning is a person of virtue makes a, a, the progression from knowing what is right Listen to this. A person of virtue making the progression. Learning. And he said, add to your faith virtue. A person of virtue makes the progression from knowing what is right to doing what is right. Knowing and doing is two different things. He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Hey friend, I can know. Hey listen, there's many that know about the Lord, know what the Lord can do, but never receive the Lord. Virtue. Knowing what is right and doing what is right. It has both in two. But that comes through and by diligence and adding to your faith. Hey friend, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Hey friend, He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. 
Hey, friend, tonight, if you're saved by the grace of God, hey, you forsook all. You forsook your old past. You forsook your old lifestyles. You forsook your old talk. You forsook even your old friends. Hey, not saying you ain't acquaintances and you don't wave your hand. You don't say howdy every once in a while. Hey, but friend, I want you to know your lifestyle is different to them that, hey, right, listen, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It's a progression. It's not something that just lays in our lap. Preacher, that's what a lot of people want today. They want the silver spoon shoved in their mouth. That ain't the way God works. Hey friend, to be able to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus is to get in with Jesus. Hey, what did he say? Lo, I come in the volume of a book. If you don't have faith, faith's right here. You don't have virtue, virtue's right here. I'm going somewhere and trying to get there quickly. Philippians 4 8, it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good, of good report, if there be any virtue, hey, that goodness, hey, friend, what's not of faith is sin. That's what Paul said. Hey, if it don't glorify God, it's sin. Amen. I know that sounds like some hard words, but go talk to Paul. He's the one that wrote, not me. Amen. I'm just telling you what he said. Hey, but listen, friend, tonight, I want you to know that it takes a progression in your life to get to the place of saying God I'm saved by your grace hey a lot of people don't stop because they ain't never started at the starting line amen they crossed the starting line they're saved by the grace of God but they don't do no more than that I tell my congregation all the time we're going to think a lot of things uh, when judgment comes we're going to find out a lot of things what wasn't what we thought they was amen why because it didn't apply up with the word of God it didn't stand right amen it didn't stand with the Lord hey listen we can say we're saved oh man I tell you right now hey but there's some that's all they're going to have when they get there it's salvation Hey, it's tried by fire. Hey, wood, stubble, hay. Hey, listen, it's silver and gold, tried by the fire. Hey, but listen, what happens to stubble? It's the one that's burnt off. Hey, man, when everything else is gone, that's all you have in salvation. God bless your heart. Jesus died for you. Why not give him more than that? Why not give him more than that? Hey, man, he deserves everything we could ever give to him. Hey, friend, every breath in my life that ever I had ever since I was born, he give it to me. Hey, friend, he could have let me die and go to hell, but he didn't. Why shouldn't I want to give every breath back to him? Why shouldn't I want to live my life as according to the Word of God? Hey, it's a lamp into my feet. It's a light into my path. You want me to tell you why I ain't went, went shipwrecked? It ain't because of me, bro. It's because that lighthouse. Amen. It's because of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only reason I'm not shipwrecked tonight. Think on these things. Be diligent. Hey, where is, hey, what is the old saying goes? The out of mind is a devil's playground. Hey, friend, to get progression in the Christian life, hey, you'll let these things that are of a naught, of no reason, hey, have no weight to them. Just let them fall off of you. Hey, they're just like dry leeches. They'll suck your blood out and then walk away. Hey, friend, seeing you dead, not living, hey, just laying there like a good Samaritan in the ditch, and they don't care whether you live or die. It suck every breath of joy you've got. They suck all the love you have. Listen, they'll do anything they can to bring it out of you. Hey, so that they that you can't show it. Hey, listen, won't you just think on the things that are good? Hey, that of virtue. Hey, man of praise. Hey, listen, friend, remember where you was when God saved you. Hey, friend, I want you to know I wasn't there. I was there when He saved me, but I wasn't there when He saved you. Hey, you're the only one that has that testimony. You're the only one. Hey, out of a, hey, whatever, what billion people, say, seven billion people I think it is on the earth today, you're the only one that has that exact testimony of what God done for you. Nobody else. How about that? How precious He is to us.
But not only that, we should add virtue to our faith, but we should add a temper knowledge to our faith. What is knowledge? The act and the fact of knowing. Hey, I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. Hey, not that I know I'm saved. I know that I know Him. Hey, friend, and I know Him, but hey, listen, I love Him because He first loved me. Hey, I don't have to serve Him under the wages of fear, under the wages of wrath, under the wages of the penalty. No, no, that was bought back at Calvary when I accepted Him at 17 years old. He paid my penalty. I don't have to worship. I don't have to worship him under the spirit of fear. No, he gives me of love. He gives me out of love and sound mind. Amen. Godliness. Listen, friend. He gives us all the attributes of what he desires in our life that will be a vessel of honor, not that of dishonor. But we have to be diligent to get them. See, we desire them, but are we getting them? You hear the preacher preach. You hear the singer sing. You hear the testifiers testify. You hear, hey, they used to call them crankers. Amen. You know what crankers are. Amen. I, we had some in our church. When I, my former home church, amen, we had some crankers. Man, you see them getting up and you knew God was getting ready to move. Amen. <laughs> He's getting ready to move in and get settled down. Amen. And then the lost people start to squirming. Amen. Then the man of God get up right after them and then you start squirming even more. Amen. Why? Because the Holy Ghost was in the midst. It wasn't just a form and a fashion. Hey, it wasn't something that we had to acknowledge of men. Hey, but we had the presence of an all living God amongst the children of God. Hey, friend, and that's the reason being why because during Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday and Saturday, they were diligently working. Hey, searching. Desiring it. Hey, friend, and they looked for it and they started praying for it and then on Sunday it failed because they looked for it. Diligence shows a desire. You tell a kid a question or ask a kid a question, he'll go to his stream and extends in his little brain to try to figure it out. Amen. Hey friend, they'll try to ask you every question under the sun, try to figure it out. They'll go to the preacher, they'll go to the deacon board, they'll go to daddy, they'll go to mom, they'll go to grandma, grandpa, they'll go to every cent. Hey friend, and if we're not diligent in the book, how are we going to lead them? Hey man, how are we going to be able to know what's right and what's wrong? How are we going to know what to stand, what's right, and what to stand for what's wrong? Hey friend, how are we going to be able to say we have virtue if we ain't diligent? How are we going to say we have knowledge if we're not diligent? Hey, you can't have None of it if you ain't diligent. Amen. Amen. I'm in the South and I said ain't and I'm not ashamed. Amen. Proverbs 7, 1. 1 through 7 if you want to turn. I'm just preaching what the God of heaven given me. Proverbs 1, 1 through 7 it says... The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction to perceive the words of understanding. He's getting ready to tell us how. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, uh, to give subtility to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Oh, listen to this. A wise man will hear and increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto to wise counsel. They're diligent. Hey friend, I want you to know today, but to understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, now listen to this. Here we go. Here's the question. Here's the answer to all those that he just said about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Hey friend, they despise it. Hey, they don't want to do it. They want to lay it aside. They don't want to be instructed. They don't want knowledge. Hey, they just want to say, hey, I'm a Christian and that's all I desire. Hey, guess what? They ain't what God designed it for and they ain't what He desires of you. Amen. Amen. Salvation He paid for, but He expects you to be human in responsibility of what He gives you. Amen. Amen. 
If you're not human responsibility, guess what? You're going to stand accountable for every deed, whether it be good or bad. Hey, friend, you don't stand before the preacher. Hey, guess what? The preacher will stand before him as well. Hey, friend, we all will stand before him. Hey, but friend, I want you to know if we try to be diligent, we try to live for the Lord, we try to let His light shine, hey, guess what? You're going to get more at the end than you did at the beginning. Go read Job's life. Hey man, that's a representation of a child of God. Hey, being born in this world is a man a few days and full of trouble. Hey, but look at the end of his life. He gets more than he did at his beginning. That's the way a child of God is when he passes from this life to the next. Hey, we didn't get much on this side. Well, you might have been a millionaire on this, on this side, but when you're saved and listen, you're born again, you get on the other side, you get more at your end than you did at the beginning. Hey man. Oh, thank God for that. Well, that's another message. Hey, but listen, friend, I, I want us to see diligence. We're going somewhere. Ain't that? And three, it's temperance. He labeled his temperance. I done took my place. Second Peter chapter number one. Verse number six. And to knowledge temperance. And the knowledge, temperance. This is the building blocks for a Christ, victorious Christian life. But I want to ask you something. As I read in that first scripture, Peter seen it as a needful thing to stir up the remembrance. I want to ask you a question as the title of my message tonight. Do you remember? Do you remember? Hey friend, I'm glad that you couldn't remember when the Lord saved you. But when's the last time you dug into that book? Hey man, and you heard Him speak to you. Hey, when's the last time you got on your knees and you started praying and you heard Him praying, hey, speaking to you? Hey, listen friend, have you been diligent this week? Hey, trying to ask God what He would want from your life out of this service tonight? Or have you left it on the preacher's shoulders? Have you left it on the singer's shoulders? Have you left it on the choir's shoulders? Hey, friend, it's time we get diligent about what God wants us to do. Amen. Being have having virtue, adding faith, or adding to our faith virtue and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance. Temperance. What is temperance, preacher? Hey, the self resistance in conduct. In other words, if you get to a place where somebody wanted to dispute a very act, there's a man the other day, I like to door dash a little bit, and I was out at his front door, and it said to leave it there and just walk away, take, take a picture and walk away, and that guy was outside, and I said, I'm not leaving this food with him. He'll eat every bit of it. And then I'll be in big trouble. So, I mean, they could call door dash. They could tell them, hey, what he done was wrong, and I thought, mm, I'm not doing that. And he told me, he said, just walk in there and tell I said, I can't do that either. I'm not going to be disrespectful to somebody's house and call them by name. And he, he, I talked to him a little bit. And before long, I found out that, friend, <laughs> that he said this. He said, I'm not trying to argue the issue. And I thought, oh, my goodness, what are you trying to argue about? Hey, listen, the Word of God is not to be argued. It's the settle of the argument. The Word of God is the settlement of the argument. If we, I tell the people this all the time in my church. Hey, listen, we take it as is. Everybody has opinions. Everybody has nose hairs. Let's just pluck them out and forget about them. Amen. Hey, just ask what the Lord thinks about it. Look in the Word of God for our own benefit and stand on that and not our opinion. Amen. Hey, we go some words. We'd be able to raise up a new generation hey, that can know God in the fear of God, in the reverence of God, in the knowledge of God. Hey, friend, we could raise up a generation that has the fullness of the Spirit of God. But it takes diligence on our part. It takes virtue. It takes faith. It takes virtue. It takes knowledge. It don't just lay in your lap after you're saved. That's what I was hoping for. When I first got saved, that's really what I was hoping for. I was hoping I'd just get saved and go to heaven. That's it. Didn't have to worry about nothing else. And then for long, I felt the call. I'm going to go talk to an old man of God that I know. He's about 80 years old at the time. He'd been pastoring 50 or preaching 50 years. And I told him, I said, listen, I, I think I'm being called to preach. He said, let's go tell you that. He got outside. And I thought, why are you getting excited? That ain't right. I don't want to get excited. I was kind of, I was, I was nervous. Hey, Amen. I said, listen, I went and talked to my dad, and, I, and my dad said, son, make sure of this thing. And I thought, well, that part I can do. I can go talk to God about this thing. 
I thought of that in my heart. I was like, well, sure, I can go talk to him. That'd be all right. And I told him what I needed. And listen, he, he answered it distinctly as I asked. Now, he don't do that to everyone. He gave me confirmation, in other words, of my calling. And I didn't have no choice but to preach. Hey, he, you can't preach unless you be sent. But if you be sent, you better preach. Amen. Hey, listen, friend, I'm thankful for what God does in our lives. I'm thankful for the confirmation. I'm thankful for His grace, His love, His mercy. But listen, friend, He don't just lay in your lap and just fold it out before you. You have to talk to God and get diligent about it. God, I want it. God, I want it. Hey, this is February on fire, but we're getting ready to find out the water about the fire. Amen. A man in temperance, self self resistance and conduct. First Corinthians nine twenty seven says this: But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. Hey, listen, friend, do you want to be a castaway? Do I want to be? A, you know what that means? You know what that means in a whole? Hey, when the lost people are sitting there and you're up preaching, you're up testifying, you're up singing, you're up ministering anyway, and they seen your life Monday through Saturday and they're thinking you're just a hypocrite you're just a hypocrite I don't have to hear you I don't believe you I don't believe this and they walk out the door just as lost as they did when they come in hey that's why we should be diligent that's why we should be serious that's why we should be sincere that's why we should be real hey friend if you're not a Christian on Monday two through Saturday how are you going to be a Christian just on Sunday must be diligent and to that diligence, we must add faith. And the faith, uh, uh, listen, virtue and virtue, knowledge and knowledge, temperance. Oh, that's a good one to hear, ain't it? Titus 2.12 says this, teaching us that, we den- that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. What does that mean, preacher? That means if we got temperance, we can deny ourselves. We can deny the temptations. And listen, we can deny the enemy. Hey man, friend. Hey, if you got temperance, hey, when the thing comes up in your face and it blows up like dynamite, listen, he'll give you the strength and the know how to be able to settle it and to be able to make it through. Hey, friend, if we'll trust him, if we're diligent at seeking him and searching for him and asking him and relying on him, hey, friend, he'll see us through any storm. He'll give us the temperance. What is the, what is one of the fruits of the spirits? Temperance. Hey, friends, I'm suffering. Hey, listen, friend, he gives us that through. Hey, listen, it's a progression. He gives us the Holy Ghost when we first got saved. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying the fruits come through understanding and learning and actually letting Him use you. Being, hey, being like a potter in the, uh, the pottery in the clay of the, being clay in the pottery's hands. Being pliable. Let Him mold you and make you as He wants. You know what? Anything in this Word ain't going to hurt you. You think it is. Always it seems like a two-edged sword, right? Oh, it ain't. Hey, there's a Bob Gilead, amen. Hey, there's a healing, there's a healing formula in this. Hey, listen, if we'll just be diligent enough to look at it and to listen to him and allow him to apply it in our hearts and lives, hey, he'll heal things that's been there for years. Hey, man, friend, he'll make you a new creature if you're lost. Hey, friend, he'll take grudges and throw them out the window. Hey, friend, he'll take those that usually you think was against you and let you see and right that they were standing for you. Hey, the devil is there to destroy. He's not there to be your friend. He's not there to be your kindred. He's there to destroy you. You've got to be diligent. Diligent tonight. But we must be able to add these things daily. That means a progression, friend. That means tomorrow you might have to deal with these things, but you ask the Lord, Lord, if I deal with this today, and listen, friend, if you deal with it, let Him lead. If you don't, you'll make a mess. You'll make a mess. Fourthly, I prayed this this evening as I was going down the line, and this one scared me to death as you hear all the scriptures saying, but guess what? You need it. Amen. Knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience. You need it. Might as well ask for it. Hey, but you know what I've done? I've done a little extra. I said, Lord, as needed. 
as needed. As needed. Amen. I don't want, hey, listen, I've had trying times and he's seen that in the past four months. I, I desire not to be able to ask God for patience on top of a trial and then one come above that one. Hey, Amen. I have enough common sense to ask God in his due time to teach me. Uh, but listen, friend, we must have patience. What is patience? To endure without complaint. Did you hear me? Patience is to endure without complaint. Hey, listen, friend, we must be as good soldiers of Christ. Hey, friend, what did Jesus do as He faced the cross? He faced the crowd. He faced the lashings. He faced the scoffing. He faced the mocking. He faced the cursing. He faced those that hated Him. Hey, what did He do? He opened not His mouth. He had no guile in him. He could have uh, rebuked every one of them. Every one of them. He could have said, you're a liar. You're going to hell. Could have. Yeah, he could have seen them. Because he could have sent angels to destroy this place. He said, he told Pilate, you don't take my life. <laughs> I lay it down. I lay it down. Are you hearing me tonight? Say amen. amen. But I want you to see patience takes time. Let patience, as James says, let patience have her perfect work. Uh, listen, friend, perfect means absolute, uh, without wanting nothing, content. Hey, friend, you get to the place, and that's not a plateau, you get to the place of understanding that you don't have to have the things you used to think you have to have. Hey, listen, you're thankful for the breath you have. You're thankful for the steps you have. You're thankful for God and His grace and His mercy on your life. You're thankful for the church being open. You're thankful for a church that we can come to without the fear of our life being threatened. That's coming to the house of God. Hey, I've been in countries where it's had that. I've even been in a service one time. I'm not going to say the place. Hey, but listen, I was preaching, and after the preaching, guess what? That old man of God that I was with, he said, "We got to get in the we got to get in the car and get in the car quick." I said, "Wow!" He said, "Please on the way." I said, "Let's get." I split hairs out of that place. I probably beat him on me. Listen, friend, we have caught. Got to understand that we're going to face tribulation. We're going to face persecution. But in the time frame of patience, you understand by enduring that there's a gentle Savior beside you. Hey, the Holy Ghost, you know what He's called? The Paracletus. You know what Paracletus is? One that walks alongside. He don't leave us. Hey, listen, friend. If we do the leaving, it's because the prodigal son looked at the far country. I want to tell you, it's not worth having. It's not the discouragement I desire. It's not a depression I desire. I don't desire disappointments. I desire a walk with Jesus. And to have that, you've got to have diligence. And with that, all these things you have to add. You have to add. Did you hear that? Add to your faith virtue. God puts it in our lap. Amen. He told us in Galatians chapter number five. He told us the lust of the flesh and the lust. Of the, hey, listen. The lust, of the flesh, lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to the other. That you would not. That which you should. In other words, the ball's in your court. Who are you gonna listen to? What you gonna do about it? <laughs> Let me tell you. When you get to that place of realizing. Hey, the flesh is real and the battle is real. You know what you need to do? Do you remember? Do you remember? <laughs> if you remember, friend, that's why Peter said, I must stir you up in remembrance. Hey, friend, if you're stirred up in remembrance, it's hard to, to uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. You're stood up in remembrance of what God's told you to do. You'll be stepped. You'll be steadfast. Hey, the steps of the good man are ordered by the Lord. Now, I'm not saying be like an ostrich, put your head in the sand and dwell on No. I know you've got work to do, and I know you've got to be a dad and have family time and different things like that. But what I'm saying is, in a hope, how many... Mm, here we go. How many of us has let Hollywood step in our houses? <laughs> how many of us? Amen. How many of us? You know what? My kids, they love YouTube and uh, whatever. I love YouTube, but I love it for deer hunting. I could care less about the other stuff. You give me deer hunting all day long and I'm good to go. 
You know what? I, I don't listen to cussing during deer hunting either. I'll split you off like splitting hairs. Amen? Hey, but listen, friend, tonight I'll tell you this. If we get Hollywood out of our houses, we'll get God back in our houses. We'll be diligent to find Him. We'll be diligent to search for Him. And then when we get to the house of God, the preacher won't have to preach his guts out for you to see Him. Amen? Amen. We put it all on the preacher. We put it all on the deacon board. No. He said, you add to your faith. You add to your faith. That means every one of us in here tonight, you're you're expected to add to your faith. If we don't, we have no, we should not complain of what shape we're in. We have no reason to complain of why. Hey, listen, America's the way it's in. If we're not diligent enough to do something about it. But not only patience, but patience, godliness, devoted to God. Amen, friend. In 2 Timothy 3, 3 12, it says, Yea, and all that I will, God, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Get ready, it's going to happen. Not everybody's going to like you. Amen. Preacher, we know about that, don't we? Hey man, I went to visitation one time. You know what? He said, Preacher, you don't want to see me. I was like, What in the world did I do now? He said, I don't like you. I don't know. That's up to you. It's between you and God. Hey man, listen, friend. I had, I had to separate my God separated me from them people. I but listen, friend, if we don't live godly, who's going to? Hey, listen, if we don't allow God to live in our lives, who's going to? Hey, we expect the next generation to understand God if we're not living for God now. They and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. First Timothy 3, 3 or 4, 7 through 8, it says, But refuse profane and old wives' fables and exercise. What is Peter telling them? Exercise. Add to your faith knowledge or virtue and virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and all these things I've told you. What is he telling you to do? Exercise your faith. What is Paul telling them in, telling Timothy in 1 Timothy 4, 7 and 8? But refuse and profane, per, but refuse profane and old wise fables and exercise to thyself, thyself rather unto godliness. Amen. What he said, patience, godliness is next. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable in all things. Amen having promise of the life that is now is and of that which is to come. In other words, you'll be content. But not only that, I'm trying to move on. I'm trying to hurriedly go. And then then sixthly, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness. I want you to see that brotherly kindness means this in the Word of God, the love and the caring of the fellow Christians towards one another, all being children of the same heavenly Father. Love one another. Not no old commandment. It was when John, the beloved, wrote it down, but it ain't to us. Listen tonight, friend. In Hebrews 13, 1, it says, Let brotherly love continue. Tonight, what are you doing with that? Are you learning and growing in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus? Or are you just sitting there like a knot on the log, doing nothing about what God's told you to do? Are you diligent in what God's given you to do? Are you adding to the things daily? Number seven, charity. The love of God for man or of men for his fellow man. First Corinthians, I'm trying to get some more. I'm getting some more quick. Quick as I can. First Corinthians thirteen four through seven says this: Charity suffereth long. Do we love God? You let me tell you what. When I first got, I called, announced my call to preach. My family suffered long. Amen. Amen. Because I was a novice and I didn't know what I was doing. Amen. I didn't know my left hand from my right. And you know what? I don't know much more than that. Amen. I don't know much more than that, but I'm glad that I can say that I, I listen, I have had to suffer some things. 
How about charity suffereth long in his kind? Charity envieth not. Charity is born in not itself. You don't have to, it don't have to show its prideful self. Hey, listen, you see it by its actions. It is not puffed up, doth not behave with itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, it is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Woo, goodness. A rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. But we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Listen, friend, tonight, we've got to have charity. We've got to have diligence in it. We've got to have a want to in it. Hey, listen, friend, it ain't just going to lay in your lap. Hey, listen, friend, now it might seem that way as a preacher's preaching. Hey, but listen, friend, I want you to know something. Hey, let's go back to the Old Testament, all right? Hey, man, let's get where the rubber meets the road now. We're getting to the message. We're getting to the heart of it. Hey, man, I was trying to take it very quickly so I could get to the heart of the message of what God had have us to hear tonight. Hey, in Joshua chapter number 4, verse 1, now he said, give diligence that you'll remember. Oh, let me read one more verse. I forgot. Thank you, Lord. Let me read one more verse in this. And godliness, brother kindness, and brother kindness, charity, before if these things abound or be in you and abound, that make you. They make you. You hear that? They make you. Not you make you. They make you. You're diligent. You add to them, they're the ones that make you. The Word of God makes you what you are. I am what I am by the grace of God. That they shall need, that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But listen to this. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged of his old sin. Now let's turn to Joshua chapter number 4. 1 through 10 it says, And it came to pass, turn there while I'm reading if you don't care. And it came to pass when all the people were clean had passed over Jordan that the Lord spake unto Joshua saying, Take ye twelve men out of the people out of every tribe a man and command ye them saying, Take you hence out of, out of the midst of Jordan out of the place where the priest feet stood firm twelve stones and ye shall carry them over with you and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge, lodge this night then Joshua called the twelve men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe of man and Joshua said unto them pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan and take you take you up every man of you a stone unto his shoulder according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel that this may be a sign among you. Listen to this. That when your children, what does it say? Well, listen. Hey, listen, friend. It's not all about you. That man. I want you to know you got somebody following you. Hey, there's somebody asking questions. There's somebody tagging along. Hey, there's somebody following your footsteps. Hey, if they don't have the right answer, then how do you expect them to get saved? And the Lord your God in the midst of Jordan and take you up every man of a stone in his shoulder according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel that this may be a sign among you that you and your children ask their fathers in time to come saying what mean ye by these stones and then ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it passed over Jordan that the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever and the children of Israel did 
did so as Joshua commanded and took up the twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them unto the place where, the, where they lodged. And they laid up and they laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priests were which bear the ark of the covenant stood. And they are there unto this day. <laughs> I'm going somewhere still. I ain't done yet. Travel with me a little bit further. For the priests which bear the ark stood in the midst of Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak unto the people according to all that Moses commanded Joshua and the people hasted and passed over. Now turn to Joshua 24, 15. I'm telling you, I'm going somewhere. If you ain't, a, if you ain't, a, listen. If you ain't got good at sword drills, you're gonna be by this night's over. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> Joshua twenty four fifteen. It says this as you read. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, what does it say? Choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served. I'm feeling some preaching now. Serve that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. Hey, listen, he done made up his mind. He done staked his claim. He done told him who was boss. Hey, listen, he didn't say I was boss. He said the Lord's boss. Hey, the Lord is God. Hey, listen, friend, I'll follow him. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And listen, what did the children of children of Israel have as an answer? And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should Forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Almost done. One more. Turn to 1 Kings chapter 18. First Kings 18. Now you'll know this story is uh, Elijah had already prophesied about the rain uh, not descending and listening and all this that was going on. And now he's passed over to that and it, the rains fell and the gods allowed that to happen. Now actually, he actually had to run for his life and the brook cherub and the raven. And listen, in the widow has supplied him meal and supplied him food, supplied him all that he needed. And now God's told him to go back and meet with Obadiah. He goes to meet with Obadiah as Ahab had sent him out. And listen, Obadiah was a godly man that hey, listen, saved many prophets of God. Hey, 50 by one cave and 50 50 by the others, what I read, as there was a hundred total. I but listen, friend, as Elijah came to Mount Carmel, he asked a question. And Ahab sent unto the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together, verse 20, unto Mount Carmel. So listen to this. Listen to this. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long? Hold you between two opinions. He's talking to the children of God. Hello? Sounds like they got diligence, right? Sounds like they got faith, virtue, knowledge, amen, understanding, amen, temperance, patience. Sounds like they've been adding to it daily, right? Because they just have to question their head, scratch their head of who God is who. Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt you between two opinions? If the Lord God, if the Lord be God, follow him, but if Baal, then follow him. This is amazing to me. And the people answered him not a word. What did they do in Joshua 24, 16? Hey, it didn't take them long. I, I, we, God forbid that we forsake, for, we forsake the Lord to, try, to follow other gods. Yeah. Hey, man, it didn't take them long to tell them His final answer. We want to follow God. We don't want to follow false gods. We don't want to follow the wisdom of this world. Hey, we want to be diligent. Hey, guess what? They dropped the ball. Hey, why? Because now they don't have an answer. This is years later. Hey, there was a memorial there. Why didn't they know about the memorial? Why didn't they know about what God had done in that person's life? Hey, let me tell Tell you why they're not diligent enough to tell them. They don't. They don't live it Monday through Saturday. They're not diligent enough. But they expect God to come with a rose and pat them on the back. I pray God give you a sword that lashes you up one side and down the other, and then He brings the bomb of Gilead as He does that lamb as He breaks it. 
breaks its leg, what does he do? He wraps the wound. Let it heal it. He puts it up in its bosom to let it know its love. But you know what else he does? As a shepherd, as the shepherd of the sheep, he is the door of the sheepfold, right? And he is the door. You know what that means? When one goes out astray, when one's not diligent, when one's not careful, when one's not steady, when one just goes any other way, goes to every wind and doctrine, they go to everything and think it feels right. Hey, let me tell you something. Faith don't feel right sometimes. Faith is just right. If they go astray, you know what that good shepherd has to do? He breaks his leg. And binds his wound. And then puts him into a special place. You know what that good shepherd does? He lays down. And you know what he says? I'm the door. Broken sheep, if you think you can get away from me, try to get over me. Try to get over me. If you don't listen to the Lord and be diligent of what He's given you to do, your family, be diligent in prayer, be diligent and watchful, if you don't, are not diligent, the thief is but to come to steal, to kill, and destroy. He hates you. You listen to me and listen to me close. I'm about done. You'll be just like them people years to come. Your, your generation that's falling behind you, like, who's God? Who's God? Baal or, or the Lord? Who's the Lord? Who are you talking about? Get ready. You're getting ready to find out. Let's go to verse 21. Or verse 22, and it says, Then Elijah said unto the people, I, even, I, even I only remain a prophet unto the Lord. Of course, it was, he didn't understand at that time. It was 7,000. He understood. But listen, friend, sometimes we do stand alone. We do stand alone. But Baal's prophets are 450. And listen, he had uh, 400 prophets of grove, really a total. If you have math, there's actually 850 there. But he stood against 450 prophets of Baal. Uh, listen, you'll see that they cut themselves. And listen, friend, they had uh, that which was of a religious format. They had that of a form, but of a fashion, but denying the power thereof. Hey, listen, you can have a form, you can have a fashion, deny the power of thereof. Hey, listen, hey, it says to run for from them. Amen. Uh, but listen, friend, I want you to know today hey, that there's many out there that would love to deceive your children, would love to deceive this church, would love to deceive my church, would love to deceive Burke County, would love to deceive McDowell County, would love to deceive America, which he's doing a pretty good job. Hey, listen, but I want you to know as us as a small community, we need to bind together, get diligent about the work of the Lord Monday through Saturday, the work of the Lord can meet on Sunday. And then the next generation won't have a question mark in their head. Who's God? I'm going to end with this. Say it in the prayer room. Elijah said 42 words. After all that they had done, they cut themselves. Elijah made fun of them, which I don't blame him. I probably would have too, because that's about foolish. I pray to something that's not alive. That's dead. I'm praying the grass, but it ain't going to listen. And it's alive more than Baal was. Amen. But Elijah, he took and he put the altar back together. He, he, he restored it. He put a trench about it. He put rocks in the trench. He put the bullock on the altar. He put water in it, I believe, three times. Hey, listen, friend, and in 42 words, he had called upon the God of heaven. Hey, listen, and he come and consumed it all. Hey, besides, listen, I want you to know all of it was gone. Hey, listen, the rocks were gone. The water was gone. Hey, what, 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 what fire receives water as a good thing? I believe it just added fuel to the fire in God's fire. He said, I'll just take the water, I'll take the rocks, I'll take the book. Hey, he could have took the altar for all that matter. He was still God. Hey, but listen, I want you to see the response of the people. Give me just a second. I'm wearing tired. I said, do it a second time. Oh, I'm telling you. Hear me, O Lord, hear me. This is verse 37. That this people may know. Well, I thought they're supposed to know. They're the children of Israel. I thought this was supposed to be handed in their laps. Was it? They didn't give diligence to add to their faith virtue. 
and the virtue knowledge and the knowledge temperance and the temperance godliness and the pa- or actually temperance patience and patience godliness they didn't add none of that to it now generations has come by and they scratch their head of who really God is and now they've had to have a prophet of Baal, a prophet of God, to go against the prophets of Baal. Now listen to this. That they may know thou art the God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the, wa- the water that was in the trench. Listen to this. Verse 39, I'm done. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their face and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. It took an act of fire to get a response of repentance. It took an act of fire to get a response of repentance. We need an act of fire to get a response of repentance. The only way we're going to get it is not only by a true faithful man of God that does preach the Word of God. Hey, listen, it takes us. If we truly want it in an old-fashioned form, Monday through Saturday, we'll diligently be asking for it. We'll diligently be searching for it. We'll diligently be desiring it. And when we come down, listen, friend, to the house of God, we'll find it. And listen, not just us. Hey, but those we bring behind us will see it. And listen, they'll see the power of God. They'll see the conviction power of God. They'll see how it works. And then when it deals in their life, they'll know who that is. And when they ask, when somebody asks, ask them a question what is this perverted state that we live in in the state of the United States is that really the way it is or is there a really a God hey listen friend today I want you to know we have questions that have to be answered but we have to do it through diligence Elijah done been there done that the question is do you remember do you remember what did the preacher preach on this morning? I want chapter and verse in your mind. Yeah, you can say it out loud too. That's fine too. If you don't remember this morning's message, you're not too diligent. That means you're just like a knot on the log. You're just there just to be seen. Just to be heard. You know what? God said don't be like it. The Lord Jesus said don't be like a hypocrite. Counts his money. Be diligent. What God's given. You want me to tell you what the old devil was telling that, hip, uh, that Pharisee? Oh, you're doing right. You're doing right. When the God of heaven, the God of all creation said he's doing wrong. He's doing wrong. Doing wrong. And they wouldn't listen to it. They wouldn't heed to it. They, and they crucified him for it. Amen. Because they rebu- he rebuked them. In the love, in the kindness that he had for all mankind, he rebuked them in love. Do you hear me? He didn't rebuke them in hate or hatred of what they were doing or who they was. Hey, sinners will be sinners. He understands that. He loved the publicans. He loved the sinners. He loved the Pharisees. He loved everybody. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Listen tonight, friend. But it's in mind in your ball court. As a child of God, as a saved individual, we get up our loins and we stand for what's right. We get diligent about this work that God's give us. We get on our prayer bones and start praying. We start studying for God to be happy with us and to be able to tell people right. Because guess what? Whether you believe it or not, there's people dying and going to hell as you listen to this message tonight. You could fall asleep. You could clap your hands. You could say amen. You could come to the altar. But there's people dying and going to hell as we hear tonight. And it's because some person dropped the ball. Some person drop the ball. Not God. God said He gave every man a measure of faith. Hey, they put their faith in what they wanted to. That's free will. But listen, friend, I want you to know tonight, if we don't do our part, if we don't do our part like Elijah did, there'll be people blind, not know who God is, not see the fire, and never be, hey, listen, never be convinced there is a God. Because we weren't diligent enough to seek Him. We weren't diligent enough to ask Him. We weren't diligent enough to search Him out. Oh, God will give it to me. 
Yeah. He'll give it to a preacher too. But guess what? He says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Hey man, that comes to the preacher, that comes to the pulpit, to the back door. If we're not studied, we're not ready. Hey, God can fill our mouth, but sometimes He can let us learn a lesson. He can fill it with hot air too. Hey Amen. Amen. You expect the preacher to uh, uh, pray all week long, study all week long. Hey, you expect him to pray over the prayer list all week long. You expect him to prepare all week long. Well, what about you? Hey, man. Hey, listen, friend. He might need some encouragement. He might need some strength. He might need someone to take care of business around the house of God. Guess what? We're not, hey, we're just like grass. Hey, we're just here for a little while, ain't we, brother? And then we're going to fade away. Where are you going to be? Preacher shouldn't be the only one diligently. Seeking the Lord. It would be you. What about you? Do you remember? Do you remember? Let me ask you, you remember what two weeks ago happened? you remember what happened in your life? God didn't have to give us but one chance. He gave me multiple chances. <laughs> hey man, how gracious. He was diligent in working with me. He was long-suffering. Hey man, His temperance. Hey man, showed out. He, he, he resisted the, the, listen, the wrath of God. It could have been kindled all over me. You listen to me. Oh, he had the knowledge. Hey man. Hey, but we got to dip into the bucket to get it. What about you? You remember? If you don't remember, ask God to show you. Help you remember tonight. Hey, if you ain't got the fire, get the fire back. That's what Elijah did. He prayed for it and he got it. Hey, ask and you shall receive. Seeking you shall find. Knocking it shall be opened. To you. He that asketh receiveth. Simple as that. You believe in faith. You ask in faith. You'll receive it in faith. Amen. Yeah. What Elijah did. But you know what? He didn't see it as a big task. That was a weighing weight on his shoulders. No, it was the God of heaven he's talking to. It was the God of all creation. It was the God that can answer prayers. It wasn't no big thing for him to say, Lord, help these people in 42 words. All this prayer you'll about see in the Bible. And fire came down and took it off. Sure sounds like an important prayer, right? Yes, it is. Because there's faith involved. There was faith involved. There was diligence involved. There was somebody that needed the answer. And he knew that. And he told God, help us. God delivered. If you want God to help, you got to ask. If you want to remember, you got to ask. You want the fire back? You gotta ask. If you want revival, hey, listen, this is why I told my wife, I said it's a revival meeting. That's why I come into church tonight as revival. Hey, if you want revive, get, get right here. You want regenerated? Get right here. You want restored? Get right here. Why not get right here where the Holy Ghost is, where He can do what He can only do? You can't do it in yourself. You never will. You never have the answer, but He does. Man, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Hey, listen, Paul said this. He said, I can do all things through Christ. Christ is a priority. Christ is God. Christ walked in the flesh as God. He is God. Hey, listen, friend. If you want the answers, come to God. That's simple. Elijah showed us a good effort in that. He showed diligence, but he also showed effort. We want it. We can have it. We just got to come get it. Come on, preacher. That's all I have for you tonight.